Uh, hello, I'm Gavin Bates, Community and Communications Manager at Workplace Law, and I'm here with Suzanne McMinn, uh, Head of HR at Workplace Law, with a Workplace Law uh, news special. So last Friday, a bill proposed by Tory MP Gavin Barwell, which aims to outlaw certain forms of mental health discrimination, completed a second reading in the House of Commons. Uh, if passed, the bill would repeal current legal provisions, which can prevent people with mental health conditions from serving as MPs or on juries or, uh, or as company directors. Uh, this builds on a similar bill uh, sponsored by Lord Stevenson, which aims to make provisions uh, about discrimination against people on the grounds of their mental health. So, Suzanne, uh, should these two bills be passed, what ramifications would they have for employers? Well, it's, it's a good question to raise, actually, Gavin. Um, it will have some ramifications on employers because at the moment mental health issues aren't covered by the Equality Act and just because they're not a physical disability, nonetheless employees are affected by them. So import it is important that these issues are raised and if, it, if appropriate and where appropriate protection should be provided and legislated for just as the same as it were a, a physical disability. Uh, so would these two bills bring mental health under the Equality Act umbrella? Uh, I can't see there being a separate um, act coming into force. And to be honest, the Equality Act has so many um, protected characteristics anyway. The mental health issue would slot nicely under the arena of disability, and quite rightly so, because the provisions should be exactly the same, as I've mentioned. And does the law as it stands put those with either a current or a previous mental health condition at a distinct disadvantage in the workplace? Um, I don't know whether it's a distinct disadvantage because aside of the legislation there's just common ways of treating people and what's right and what's fundamentally wrong and what um, sits right within certain organisations and certainly with the clients that we work with there aren't any um, outward ways that people would go to discriminate just because somebody's got a mental health issue or has had but certainly um, the legislation as it stands doesn't allow the same protection as it would be um, with somebody with a physical disability, as I've mentioned. Uh, will these new proposals make it harder for employers to manage their workforce? No, not at all, because the framework's already there under the Equality Act, as I've mentioned. It's got the protected characteristics. It has one for disability. It just covers physical disabilities to some degree. So the mental health issues should just be a slot in on that. It shouldn't be something new. It should be something that we should be doing, that we should be valuing the difference that people look, uh, bring to an organisation, rather than saying, you're different, you've got something different, therefore you can't do this. And finally, Suzanne, do you think that this legislation goes far enough um, to helping reduce stigma in the workplace? No, I don't think they will. And I think that's an, an, an honest opinion in the same way that we legislate for dis different disabilities or different areas of discrimination. There will always be people who will look at the difference and make a decision on it, whether it's a mental health issue, whether it's a physical disability or the colour of somebody's skin. And I think that is just the makeup of the society that we bring. Mental health issues do have a stigma attached to them. And hopefully the legislation will bring it um, more to the forefront of people's minds and say, it's just a mental health issue. It's something that we need to talk about. It's something that we address and say, we've got it, we've had it, we're better, we're dealing with it, and we move on. In the same way with what we do with any employee issue, um, people try to hide mental health issues and because of the stigma that it brings. And what's really awful, if they do talk about them, employers tend to think, oh, well, that's a problem. How am I going to deal with that? Is that going to be an issue within the workforce? And it shouldn't be. We should embrace the honesty that people bring to it and say, fine, how can we support you in getting over this? How can we support you within the organisation?